So we're back in the shop today, and the reason being is that uh, I need to make a new handle for the broad axe. When I purchased this broad axe uh, from my old neighbor, it was his grandfather's uh, years ago, and I knew that he had put this handle on that was somewhat ornamental. Uh, it's kind of a soft wood. I'm not sure what it was, but it was starting to check right here. And I don't like the offset. It's just far too extreme. So uh, I thought, well, I'd use it uh, until it broke. And I no more than, than uh, used it just a few minutes uh, yesterday. You guys saw it on the um, Back to Basics video. And then it started to crack here. So this isn't going to work. So uh, before we can go any further on that project, I need a hewing axe. And so what I have here is I've got a beautiful piece of flat sawn six quarter hickory uh, from Tennessee, best handle material in the world. And we are going to make a very special handle for a very special axe. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to do this wrong. So I didn't mind the original length of the handle. It seemed to be just about right. So we'll stick with that here. We can always, uh, it is maybe a bit on the long side for a hewing axe, but we can always cut it down. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll just stick with what we had. So I think I've got the handle shape pretty much worked up. I've been looking at a lot of different hewing axes. Here's one from Broad Axe from Grand Force Brooks there. And very traditional, pretty straight handle with sweeps in them. This one here is really uh, kind of tricky because the eye is just so big. It's three inches across. And this wood is just barely big enough. I may have to wedge it, double wedge it, just to wedge it over to fill the hole. But uh, we'll see when we get closer. But here you can see, here's the five inches that the, the head will fit right here. And then I've got this pretty symmetrical, starting about an inch and three quarters, tapering down to two inches. And so I'll probably cut this out square and then work a radius in this here with a spoke shave, just a little bit. But that is the preliminary, the little hash cut on the back, I like that, kind of Asian style. Let's cut it out. So here's the rough cut out of the handle. You can see here maybe a little bit of the angle of it. Very unusual handle. I haven't done anything like this before, but uh, it'll be something kind of like this. So I got the handle, uh, the top section roughed in. And man, I hope we got it right. I, I pounded this thing into the head, just fitting it, and I had it roughly, you know, maybe an inch or so. It took me an hour getting it out. Uh, it just is fits so tight. So I uh, went ahead and, and hopefully have everything done because once I pound it on, once I get it to that halfway point, I just don't think I can get it off of there. Many of you guys ask, who have joined the channel lately, you know, why do you set, set, a, uh, set a head this way? Well, the, the mass of the head is so heavy that uh, the forward motion of the handle by hitting it down there will drive it into the head. It's the only way to properly seat an axe head. One thing I'll also I'll do, you know, to see how, see how I'm coming uh, with it, if it's moving anymore, you know, when you, how do you know when to stop? by putting a pencil line right here and then give it another blow and see if that pencil line disappears. Keep doing that until you, uh, the pencil line won't move anymore. When you get close, you know, don't draw a whole line. You don't want to, that to remain on your axe, but just a, a very light little line that you can sand out. Let's see if this wedge 
This was a uh, one of the more difficult handles I've ever done. Here's a wedge, just made that of a piece of hickory. And I have been uh, on recent heads treating these with boiled linseed oil. And I have, uh, it seems to me, that they go in better. I don't know if it's just a little bit of lubrication, but the other nice thing is that once it gets in, it'll seal the inside of that wood and protect it. So I just don't, I don't see a downside to it. If we do it right before we set the wedge, then we don't have to worry about the wood swelling so much. I don't know if I would soak them in boiled linseed oil beforehand, but maybe. Okay. Now when you pound your wedge, of course, you know, always use a block of wood on top of it. If you just use the hammer, it'll split. You can see the top of this head has a kind of a radius in it. If you have to cut a radius, you want to use a tool, or any, whatever it is, a saw that's like this, a coping saw that has a thin blade. The thinner the blade allows you to turn it. So if you need to do really tight radiuses, you need a thin blade, whether it be a band saw or, or whatever. So a coping saw is a good saw to use when you have, have to turn tight corners. So as you can see right here, we have a, we just couldn't have a tighter fit. That uh, that piece, I was lucky. That piece of hickory I had, I didn't cut it this way at all. It just, I was afraid it was going to be shy, but it's it's um, very very tight. So we're going to put our step wedges in now. <clears throat> a lot of you guys have said you've had trouble finding these at hardware stores that they're not carrying them anymore. Good hardware stores will carry these, and usually when you buy a handle, uh, a lot of times if you get a good handle, these will come with it. But I've got a matching set here. And we'll put this in. Hopefully these won't split. I have had um, a lot of trouble with this particular piece of hickory uh, splitting handles when I put the step wedges in. do one more this is a big head and I put that wedge in there so tight that there's gonna be a, there's a lot of force on it there that is properly done absolutely properly done there here you can see a different angle, but nice. That's really, that's a good fit. That was a tough handle. That was a bear cat to do. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to do that every day. So here's the completed handle. I'm not going to uh, smooth sand this or really put a high uh, polish on this. I found that, you know, working with this the last couple days, that the hewing, my, 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 my wrists and forearms are so sore from using it that I, could barely hold my fork at dinner last night. I'm actually glad the handle broke so I have a little time to uh, to, to recover. But uh, I'm gonna cover this, or we'll put some uh, boiled linseed oil on this. I might as well just do it now. And I'm gonna leave it rough, you know, kind of the, I don't know what grit that is, 80 grit or so, because uh, I want to be able to, to grip it, you know, and give myself every advantage that I can. It'll polish up with use. Don't you worry about that. My last piece of hickory. I got a lot of good out of that piece of six quarter that I bought. I made lots of tool handles all summer and it's time to get another one. If you can't find hickory, a lot of you have asked me where to get it. Just go to a, a good lumber yard, you know, one where the professionals go to, and they can order it for you. You just want, uh, want it to be uh, Tennessee hickory clear number one you know the highest grade that they have and you want it to be flat sawn so the grains run in the right way 
and then you know the thickness of a handle the problem with the handle is you know the butt the what, what you call the the fawn's foot at the end you know that that swelled portion is you know that's what you have to start with and then the whole handle's got to be come down uh, to fit that so I bought six quarter so inch and which actually was inch and three quarter inch and a three quarter thicker so flat flat sawn number one Tennessee hickory that's what you see right here I might have to steam this handle we'll see I've got to use it before I just haven't used this is the only hewing axe I've ever used and, and I'm just kind of learning so uh, I see some of them are offset some of them are not and the reason why is as you come down one thing and also one thing that's different about hewing is from what I understand you want to hew with your right hand forward not your uh, left hand like you would typically swing so that takes a little getting used to right hand forward like that but the reason you've heard the expression you know barking your knuckles that came from this from hewing so when your axe if you missed or you cut through your knuckles came down made contact with the bark and you bro broke all the skin off of them so as you saw from the previous handle it was offset so if that becomes a problem uh, for me and I start barking my knuckles um, I'll build a, a steam rig and we'll steam this handle up and we'll turn it because we can't and some people might say well why don't you just get a, a really thick piece of wood and use a bandsaw and just cut it out the shape you want well if we interrupt these grains these grains are what give it the strength if we interrupt these grains and, and then have a short 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 you know and st stairs up these grains it's gonna break it won't have any strength at all the, the grain from the back of the handle needs to run continuous all the way through the eye and up to the top that's what gives it its strength so uh, you can't just cut an angle you have to uh, either have find a branch that's growing crooked the way you want and utilize that that's a good way to do it but we don't have any hickory trees here so I can't do that or uh, you can steam it so uh, well I don't know if that's gonna be necessary or not but if it is I'll I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well all right. Well, let's put our maker's mark on here, and then we'll uh, we'll be ready to go. One thing I did do on this handle that's made a huge Im improvement is I put a right where my right hand goes here I put a palm swell there you can see you know, just kind of the natural if you grab a piece of clay and just hold on to it till it's warm and then you take your hand away and look you'll see that it makes that shape kind of that round shape that's you know the perfect example is the Spyderco knife which has the best handle of any knife I've ever grabbed and a lot of thought went into this handle when it was originally designed and that is right there you're looking at is that natural shape that fits the hand better than anything else it's the most comfortable and it gives you the best purchase on it and so I've I mimic that you can see it's not as extreme as the knife but you can see right here it, it, it's small and then it goes in and especially you can really see it right there so that's right there where my right hand's going to grip, and you know, just like my the, my bushcrafting knife, it's got a good feel. That's where I'm going to hold it most of the time, and and that's that's the reason why it looks kind of asymmetrical right there. So there's the finished handle. It's not a not a pretty handle, but it's a functional handle. It's the, it's kind of the way it needs to be, and it, I think it's going to be better. This axe went from being a, a wall hanger. A decorative piece to a, a usable tool a tool that uh, is going to go back to work after sitting idle for about a hundred years this handle that was on it before was uh, simply put on there uh, I'm sure for or ornamental but you know someone has put that in there I don't know what it is it's just some sort of a soft wood but it's not a proper handle and it wasn't uh, it wasn't hung right but now it is you can see very tight it's a heavy head and I really wanted to be sure that I had a good fit. It took a lot of extra time. Um, I don't want this thing coming loose and coming down on my shoulder or something. It would be just uh, not something you want. So. I'm a first responder. A 
that's not my tone anyway so so that's it a little bit of a chamfer on the back on the, on the bottom the handle might be just a bit long I don't think so I think it's about right we'll see we just gotta use it and then uh, but it feels good fits my hand well and now we can get back to the um, back to basics project I, I couldn't go any further without this I needed it so thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video we'll see you later I know that it's hard, so we can.